Paris. City of love, romance, and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day, day of the murder, I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royal now. You got an interview. With Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He asked for you personally. Don't ask me why. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchon was a media king, a national hero, and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. Here I was, the palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes, what is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Monsieur Carchon, I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... <laughs> Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. That was no cat. My God, what? Monsieur Carson! He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe, murdered. 
And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops? Or start my own investigation? It was a no-brainer. Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. I'd come across this murderer before, and written about him. The costume killer, at least that's what I'd called him. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I'd tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. Carchon had been shot. It was one of my hair clips. My favorite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. I opened his eyes. Best to leave the crime scene as I found it. Carchon had been shot. A bust of Pierre Carchon, humble servant of La France. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. The killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket, and took it with him. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. It contained rows of titles I didn't recognize. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder, and I needed to find them. A Louis XIV table with an antique cloth. The melder had taste, but hey, with a husband that rich, taste is easy. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. Even my fingernail... Melda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French ultramarine. Just the colour I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favourite colour. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. There was no one I needed to phone, not until I had solved this case. Excuse me, madame. Yes? How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Coulard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. Not true. We shall see. Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. This is quite a scoop for you. 
I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronise me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Yes. That's why I do this job. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already. I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you, too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Thank you. I promise you won't regret this. A medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. The door was locked. The door was locked. Now we were getting somewhere. Painting showed the Cachons together, in love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? There was the very faintest of clicks. Behind the picture was a safe. The safe was locked. I needed the key. This wasn't the time for me to lie on the sofa doing my Marie Antoinette impression. Though it is very popular at parties, especially with gay guys. Don't ask me why. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique yawn. The blotter and in tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant, but not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin, carved into a box he had made. So Cochon had known my father. They really must have been friends. I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. I didn't want to t I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. Locked. Not surprising, really. It didn't work, but I...
This wasn't the time for me to do it. I didn't need the lights on. It was light enough already. The safe's lock was too secure for me to pick. How come it always works in movies, huh? The safe was locked. Did you find anything useful? This carving. Do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does a statue have to do with... Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend. Something to do with Africa. He never explained any more? No. But I think it was important to him. Always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Just one thing. I know this is going to sound strange, but did your husband ever mention, did he ever talk to you about a penguin or a snowman? What? I don't understand. He never mentioned people dressed up as penguins. Nico, I don't know what you're talking. My dear, you should go before the police arrive. There will be many awkward questions. I am grateful that you stayed. You've been so kind. Please, call if there is anything I can do. I'd misjudged her. She had every reason to be bitter, living with a guy like Carchon. From the sound of it, no one and nothing was safe around him. Hmm. Maybe I should have interrogated the cat after all. I thought of leaving, but was sure there was more to find. Pierre Carchon again. His eyes seemed to follow me around the room. I didn't want to cut myself and leave blood on the glass. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to keep my DNA to myself. Pierre Carchon was stiff for the last time. It was a boat ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. When I was a little girl, Papa used to take me on the Bateau Mouche as a treat. The cloth was embroidered with an unusual symbol. Um, no. The paint would have just soaked into the blotting paper, but the idea was good. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. Um, no. Um, no. I didn't need a...
I'd spread blue paint over the bottom of the tray. It was ruined. I was a very bad, bad girl, but also quite a clever one. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. In a way, I was going... I didn't need... Um, no. Um, no. Um, no. Um, no. There wasn't enough paint left in the tube. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. In a way, I was going back to art school. Um, no. Um, no. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. In a way, I was going back to art school. A mag... Aha! Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. And hey, she'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. A key. In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I would. I rolled the artifact in the paint until it was completely coated. Genius! The roller and the paint worked just as I planned, but what did it say? It was some kind of coded message. It read, Subjudice. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded message. The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The Conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité, by the river, housed the ancient law courts. So, subjudice could, in this case, mean literally under the law courts, below the Conciergerie. I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time.
Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask... Don't worry. You were never here. sub was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. He was up to something down here. The fence wouldn't move. The cross looked familiar. I'd seen it before. It was embroidered on the lace cloth I'd picked up at Carchon's apartment. I knew I was on the right track. I tried pushing the... A strange pair...
One down, one to go. Nothing like a good convent education for honing your lockpicking skills. For a room full of junk, that was one very sophisticated lock system. This place was definitely fishy. In more ways than one. Moving a skiff would only damage it more.
An old shell case. I wondered what that was doing there. No handle, nothing. The words sinister and dexter were carved on either side. Now any good convent girl like me knows the old Roman for left, right, left, right. But what did it mean here? The hole was too small even for my little hand. Mystery solved. Carchon's stone cylinder slotted into the hole with a satisfying click. A satisfying click told me I turned it to the right position. It felt like tumblers in a safe. Another click. Another step closer. I love the sound of locks clicking open. I removed the stone. Oh my god, the slab came down with a hell of a force. With nothing to hold it up, the cross dropped back down again. The panel wouldn't move. <laughs> Lifting the cross closed the entrance door and also opened some kind of stone panel. Ingenious. Ut lex vel ut next sumito. To the law or unto death, submit. I guess these people didn't believe in liberté, égalité, or fraternity. Yes, I'll admit it. I was a swat at school. I also wore lipstick and the nuns never knew.
Moving a skiff would only damage it more. I really didn't want to pull the fence back up and risk trapping myself in this place. I'd already unlocked the I'd already unlocked the door. It was the beautiful elephant my father had carved. The artifact was like an old... If I was going to get a closer look at the panel, I'd have to find a way of keeping the cross up. I wasn't leaving yet. I wasn't... The fence wouldn't move. I wasn't leaving. An old boyfriend of mine owned a barge once. Tempest. An old boyfriend. This fence. It was the old boathouse for the conciergerie. If I was right about the meaning of subjudice, then the answer. The cross looked familiar. I'd seen it before. The panel wouldn't... I wasn't going to risk damaging the artifact.
the stone slab had flattened one end of the shellcase. I couldn't see a gap to insert it. The stone cross was propped up. Now I was getting somewhere. I touched the slot. Nothing bad happened, which was good. I've always been attached to my fingers. This slot was designed for something specific. But what? The artifact slotted into the hole perfectly. Behind the old walls, I could hear some kind of mechanism groaning into life. But whatever had been triggered had now jammed. The gap was too thin for me to get a grip. I needed something thin enough to prise the door open. I removed the shell case. The cross didn't drop back down. Some kind of mechanism was holding it up. Another good use for a shell case. Another secret room. Somebody had something to hide. But was it what I was looking for? Wow. Through the darkness, I could see that this was a stateroom. But for what purpose? And how did it tie in with Carchon? Amazing! The thing still worked. The room lit up bright as day. Inside the drawer, I found a note written in some kind of code.
it was pretty clear from the lack of dust that someone had been working very recently at this desk. Oh my God! The sheet was a printout with my personal information. Everything from my favorite food to my waist size. They were right about chocolate, but come on guys, I'm a size 10. There was even a picture of me taken with a telephoto lens. Carchon wouldn't have taken these pictures himself. This was big and organized. I was part of it, and people were getting murdered. The dregs at the bottom of the mug hadn't dried out or gone moldy. It wasn't more than a day old. This was the article I'd written about the costume killer. My suspicions were right. Conchon had cut it out. Two businessmen had been killed. One in Italy, one in Japan. In each case, the killer had worn a costume. A penguin and then a snowman. But that wasn't the only link between the two murders. Both the victims had been big media do-gooders. And I proved they were just the opposite. So, how did they fit in with Conchon? My articles about the costume. Damn, don't you just hate it when that happens? A photo, long lost, had fallen down the back of the drawer. It was very old, but there was no mistaking the guy in the foreground. Carchon. Behind him were soldiers, a burning village, and a corpse. The photograph was cropped on the right-hand side. Somebody else in the picture obviously didn't want to be in it anymore. I wasn't surprised. This was Africa in the 60s. An uprising was being brutally suppressed. And here was Mr. Media himself, Carchon, doing the suppressing. The photograph was not just powerful evidence. It was also my ticket to one explosive story. The flags had faded, but their message was still pretty clear. Fascist regalia, a message of hate. I wasn't going to find anything in this old desk. It hadn't been used for years. The desks were covered with a layer of... The flags had faded. Fascist.
encrypted the note. It read, Pierre, full report to follow. But this is too urgent to wait. Arno and Yamada both dead. This is not a coincidence. Indeed, it seems that all of us who came together in July are in danger. Take great care. X. I wasn't the only one to make the connection between the costume killer murders. I'd been right all along. That was why he had asked to meet me. But what did I know that he didn't? I had enough for a story. An amazing story that was going to make my reputation and blow Conchance to pieces. I needed to get home fast and start typing. Bonsoir, Coulard. Nico, it's Ronnie. Hey, Ronnie, you cracked open the champagne yet? Are you crazy? What's wrong? Wait a minute. You didn't print it, did you? Of course I didn't print. That's the best piece I've written. The last, as far as I'm concerned. It's important. It's suicidal. You can't destroy a national hero. He deserved it. His corpse isn't even cold. Ronnie, two hours ago I told you what I'd found. You loved it. You begged me to write it up immediately. Two hours is a long time in newspapers, Nico. Someone's got to you, haven't they? Listen up, Nicole, and listen good. Pierre Carchon had a lot of friends, powerful friends. For your own sake. Forget what happened. You got it. End of conversation. Good night. This should have been my big break, but I knew there was nowhere else to sell the story. If Ronnie wouldn't print it, nobody would. Bonsoir, Collard. Mademoiselle Collard, my name is Plantard. I need to talk to you about your story, your Pierre Carchon story. How did you know about that? There are people out there, madame, who will be very upset by this story. Oh, really? Well, it's their lucky day. It's been spiked. Yes, I know. We must meet. We must? I have information relating to your costume killer stories. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., Café de la Chandelle Verte. Rue Alain Cour. I shall be wearing a grey overcoat. You must talk to no one about this. You can't tell me what to... Tomorrow at eight. I'll be waiting. People complain about newspaper articles all the time, but not usually before they're printed. I was beginning to feel scared. This guy, Plantard, could I trust him? Should I meet him or forget the whole business? I didn't have an answer. I'd only been in Paris for a week, but already I'd fallen in love with the city. My latest discovery was a little cafe, La Chandelle Verte. I was pretty sure the waitress was taking a shine to me. That old Stobart charm, I guess. Little did I know my reverie was about to be so rudely interrupted. As I picked myself up, I was really angry. One minute, I'm on vacation. The next minute, some clown's blown me up. I knew right away what I was gonna do. I was gonna find that clown and bring him to justice because justice matters. Justice is up there with liberty and equality and uh, fraternity, after all. That's why I'd studied law, wasn't it? Well, that and the money, of course. The sight of the dead guy's staring eyes turned my knees to jelly. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. 
No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Shelley? George Stobart, ma'am. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. Is that straight or with ice? Just give me the bottle with a cheat on it. I guess a little drop won't hurt. Ah, that's better. She knocked back the brandy as if it was water. I was glad I wasn't picking up the check. Hey, wake up! She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. I checked his pockets. The pretty young waitress was unconscious. It was the body of the old man. It was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before. The table had been overturned by the explosion. I considered straightening the table, but I figured it best not to disturb the evidence. Wrapped around the lamppost was a newspaper. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah Eddin, 1345. The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. The big story was about the brutal murder of a French media magnet, shot down in cold blood. The guy oozed confidence, like a regular French statesman. The leading article referred... The column was devoted exclusively to rumor, gossip, The clown had fled into this alley, but there was no sign of him now. The cover was too heavy and awkward to lift with my bare hands. There was nothing of interest. I'd had it with sticking my nose into French trash. There was nothing of interest. Please, hold it right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe. Marche. What a mess. 
This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Mou? Oui, monsieur. But I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll live if she survives the hangover. She doesn't remember seeing a clown, monsieur. That's odd, don't you think, monsieur? Who am I to believe, I wonder? Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi, uh, my name's George. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yep, that's right. On vacation in Paris. <laughs> Some vacation, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out in front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with a hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh, no, nothing like that. I'm Nica Collard from La Liberté. Uh, what is that, uh, some kind of nightclub? Oh, no, it's a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you could interview me about the bombing. An eyewitness account, minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real-life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. A clown? It's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. Who was the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Plantard. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Well, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. Do you know a police officer called Rosso? Rosso? Our paths have a knack of crossing. If I didn't know better, I'd say it was deliberate. Have you seen Rosso? Is he here? He's inside, attempting to question a...
Hello, friends. Fucking tastic! I've had my mic off the whole. I've had my mic off the entire time. I didn't even notice. And with that, my um. I'm just gonna. I had my mic off this entire time, so I think I'll just end it here because I've been. I feel like I'm a dumbass. And I cannot. For the life of me. Successfully saved? Okay. Uh, one sec. 12%. Okay. I'm just gonna end it here. Thank you all for watching. I've been Bankai. I've been a fucking moron for having my mic off for an hour and a half and not noticing. Uh, is my is he on? Is he on? Is he on? Is he on? Don't think he's. No, he's not on. Rich Chen. We go off for Rich Chen. Are you kidding me? Oops. Okay. Tombs in the valley and come. Just gonna read Shan because I um. Read message is gonna be uh, silent to type. That's gonna be the read message. And I'm feel dumb. Let's go.